Hey guys, it's Cheryl. I know I told you before that I'm a really big nerd, but if you needed some more evidence to see for yourself, you should head on over to Twitch and follow the Dungeon Dwellers channel because every other Monday evening I'll be on there playing Dungeons and Dragons with a few of my friends. It's a super fun time. Uh, the reason you're seeing this video is because during our game sessions we often have a lot of interesting questions about nature and the environment that our party is encountering as we walk around in this fantasy world, uh, so I thought I'd make some short explainer videos to explore the answers to some of those questions. So one of the members of our four-person party has a thing for reptiles, and some of the first encounters that we've had that were combat were against some amphibian-type creatures. Uh, so I bet a lot of you might be wondering, what exactly is the difference between reptiles and amphibians? Reptiles are the group of animals that includes turtles, tortoises, snakes, and lizards, and all of those animals have dry, scaly skin in common, and that skin uh, allows them to exist in a wide variety of habitats, so everything from marshes and wetlands like what we're walking through right now, to deserts, to forests, so they're highly adaptable because that skin really helps um, protect them from extreme temperatures and keep moisture inside their bodies. They also all lay eggs, but not like bird eggs or chicken eggs with a hard shell. Reptile eggs have sort of a soft, leathery, flexible shell that encompasses the egg. And the juveniles that hatch out of reptile eggs are smaller but physically similar versions of the adults. So they're the exact same shape, just smaller, and they grow bigger, um, and there's no parental care in reptiles. And the weird thing that I found that's sort of an internal physical characteristic of reptiles is that they also have um, multiple vertebrae or neck bones, so that allows them to be able to move their heads back and forth and up and down just like we can. Amphibians, on the other hand, that's the group that includes frogs, toads, salamanders, and Sicilians, and all of those animals have wet, slimy, smooth skin. And the thing that's really amazing about amphibian skin is it allows those animals to exchange gases with their environment, so it's a sort of uh, primitive breathing. Um, so oxygen can actually come from the air and move through amphibian skin into their bodies, and carbon dioxide can actually leave their bodies through that wet skin. Uh, amphibians also lay eggs, but their eggs are much simpler than reptile eggs, um, so they don't have any sort of shell around them, although amphibian eggs are usually covered in a sort of like snot or jelly-like substance, and that helps keep the eggs moist and protects them even if the eggs are laid on land rather than being laid in the water. The juveniles that hatch out of amphibian eggs are very different than their adults, though. You're probably familiar with tadpoles, um, but all uh, amphibians have some sort of nymph-type uh, juvenile, so their babies actually have to go through some sort of metamorphosis in order to become adults and achieve that adult physical structure. And weirdly enough, all amphibians only have one vertebra or bone in their necks, so they can't actually move their heads separate from their bodies. One of the main reasons that reptiles and amphibians are often lumped together in people's minds or sort of uh, it's hard to tell them apart is because they're all ectotherms, which is a big money word that our DM used the other night in the game session. Uh, so ecto means outside or surrounding, and therm means temperature, like in a thermometer. So reptiles and amphibians are all ectotherms, or what we call cold-blooded. Uh, so being cold-blooded doesn't actually mean that they have cold blood. What it means is that ecto, they are requiring their surroundings or relying on the ambient temperature outside to regulate their body temperature. They can't actually create their own body heat like uh, we mammals or like birds can. They're entirely dependent on the temperature of their surroundings. So in order to get warm, a reptile or an amphibian would have to move into a a sunnier, warmer spot, or to get cool, they would have to physically move into the shade. So a simple rule of thumb for our adventuring party as we're walking around in our fantasy world is that if it's got dry, scaly skin, Horatio is probably going to try to talk to it, but if it's got wet, slimy skin, no go. I really hope you're enjoying these short nerding naturalist explainer videos. I think they're a ton of fun to make. And don't forget that you should go over to Twitch and check out the Dungeon Dwellers channel so that every other Monday evening you can check out what our party is getting into um, in our fantasy world that the DM is creating for us. If this is your first time here on The Roving Naturalist or you've been here a few times and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please do. That way you can keep track of all of these nerding naturalist videos when they come out on Mondays and you'll get to see our regular Roving Naturalist videos every Thursday afternoon.